Thank you for looking at the power pack example. For this example, we are using example C2.3.2.2 .2 from Australian Standards AS3000 2018. For this example, we will be using the quick calc calculation method from within the software. For this calculation, we will be doing three phase, and our line voltage is based on 400 and phase voltage to 231. So we go to the maximum demand tab. First, we need to select our installation type. This will determine which table we use from standards, whether it's C1 or C2. For this example, we're doing single domestic. Once we've selected the installation type, the relevant load groups from those tables are available for us to add into the items. So for this example, I will add the items fairly quickly, but it will be obvious how easy it is to add items into a power pack maximum demand. So for the lighting, we have 26 lights. We go to GPOs. We will add GPOs from our library. We also have a 15 amp. We'll also add that from the library. Load group C. We have a range. And it is a three phase range. Please go to example 2322 in Australian Standards AS3000 if you'd like to have a look at the input details that we're putting in. Now, one of the features with PowerPack whether it's maximum demand or cable sizing, you can enter it any entry into the software as watts, kilowatts, horsepower, or amps, and the software will automatically convert it back to amps. So all standard examples are watts, so we will continue using watts for the example. Also under load group C, there is a dryer. Three thousand six hundred watts. There is an aircon. Four thousand watts. An instantaneous hot water system. So once we've done all of the, the, the basic entry, we can hit the Calculate button, and PowerPack will, to the best of its ability, move items in between the different phases to give a, a, a balanced solution. We also give you the opportunity to select items on particular phases. Uh, that's for two reasons. One, you may choose to not accept the the balance, our power pack comes out and move items around to, to suit the type of installation. And secondly, and more importantly, is if you've got an existing installation and you actually want to put the items on the particular phases they are, you can actually do that, lock them in place, place and see what the balance is for the installation you've got. So to match the standards example, all of the lighting has been put on blue phase. And as you can see, it's recalculated the, the maximum demand rules of two, of uh, 3 amps for the first 20 and then 2 amps for the next 20 after that and also standards have put the 15 amp on rev phase. So now that we've redone those, that balance we can see that the highest rated phase is 40 amps. I can now print the report for this calculation. It will include the input details and the balance load and it will also include company name, job number, project description if we fill those in that data out. So what we now want to do is size a cable. So we'll just show you how quickly and how easy it is to size a cable for that. So we want to use load from maximum demand. That's automatically brought that across. I can select what power factor I'm using here and that'll all depend on the type of power you have in the grid that you're working with. Our protection, put a type C breaker and we'll rate that at 50 amps. You, you have the option to change your trip multiplier um, based on standards uh, as you wish, and you can also put in the details of the breaker if you know what they are. So we'll also now go and pick a cable. 
For this example, we'll use an Excel PE. We'll use three single cores, and that will be flat. How far are we going to run that? So we'll run this uh, 60 metres. We're going to bury it in conduit. So the software has automatically, as we, as we make our changes in the software, it will automatically calculate the cable size. So it's saying that we need a 10 square mil cable, but we have immediate, we have a warning over here. So the warning is to click on the warning button, earth fault loop exceeds, maximum allowed, and the length of cable exceeds. So when we have a look here, we can see that warning, maximum run length exceeded, an earth fault loop. So the maximum we can run this is 59.97. So Power, Power Pack could have automatically recalculated this to find a solution, but we wanted to give the end user the opportunity to have a look at maybe something they've missed or what are ways that they can do it. Of course, you may have ch chosen to have an MCCB here, so you'd have an earth, a breaker on. No, we don't want to do that. Or on this calculation, this may be to a main board where you've got an MEN link on. So again, you could click that, and that solved our earth fault loop and run length problem. But note, this is not a mistake either. So the other options that we have are twofold. You know, one is we have 59.97 metres. We got 60. The 60 we've just taken off a drawing by using our ruler. We go out and site, we measure it up, and we realise that we can do that in 58 metres. It's now complied. The maximum run length is 59. So we have no issues there at all, and the earth fault loop is black across the board. Let's say for some, some reason our run length was 62 metres, so we, and we just can't find two metres on site. Well, the other option is we could come in and say, OK, we're going to fix a 6 mil earth in instead of a 4 mil earth, and we have now picked up the solution. So using a, using a software to do these kinds of calculations, not only make sure you know, that you're picking every single aspect of Australian standards and the rulings, but it also gives you the opportunity to see the errors as they come up and immediately look at the different options to fix those errors without having to do, cons you know, constant manual calculations on a piece of paper to see it. To see it. So thank you for having a look at PowerPack uh, example. If you've got any questions, please contact Spearhead Software on the numbers on the website. And we look forward to talking with you or seeing you in the future.